coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. So you're struggling with that doubt, yet there's a part of you that believes that he still wants to heal you. That's the war in the church in America. We believe that he will heal us, or he can heal us, but will he heal us? That has been a problem for decades in America. Well, I'll bring you greetings in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery, and you are watching Keys to Kingdom Living. Last week, we began the message, Beyond a Doubt, and it's addressing the issue of divine healing and miracles. God wants to touch us. He wants to heal us. He included healing in the atonement. That's where Jesus died on the cross for our sins and atoned for us, and healing is a part of that. Today, the Lord has given us a message, and this is the second uh, part of that, that addresses the issue. Sometimes when we pray and we don't get the answer soon, the enemy will start saying, well, it may not be God's will for you to be healed. Today, we're going to address that through the Word of God. Everything that I teach comes straight out of the Word and backed by it. So get out the Bible, go with me, and let's hear beyond a doubt. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will what? It does not say, and you might, you perhaps, you could, it may be possible. It says you will have them, right? Don't get under condemnation. I can feel that spirit right now. People are getting under condemnation. This word is not about bringing condemnation on you. It's about setting you free from the lies of the devil. Amen. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God said, I've sent my son that you may have a life and have it more abundantly. How are you going to get that life? You get it through knowing the truth, and the truth will make you free from the lies of the enemy. So how many has been asking God for a need to be met, and you have prayed about this need on many occasions, but you still haven't gotten the answer? Perhaps all of us? If we're not careful, we can begin to believe that it's not God's will to heal us. And if we do that, then that can cause us to doubt that we will receive what we ask for when we ask it. Because I have not gotten it yet. Because I have asked repeatedly. That can cause me to start doubting that it's God's will for me to have it. Because I have not yet gotten it. Right? How can we as Christians, children of God, receive healing or a miracle from God if we have a shadow of doubt in our heart that it might not be God's will to heal us? Think about that. You're asking God to heal you. You need a miracle from God, but yet you've been praying for this and it has not happened. Therefore, you've got doubt in your heart that it's God's will that he heal you. But on the other hand, you're saying, God, heal me. So you're struggling with that doubt, yet there's a part of you that believes that he still wants to heal you. That's the war in the church in America. We believe that he will heal us. Or he can heal us, but will he heal us? That has been a problem for decades in America. That's why I started out talking about somebody being on trial. And how that the, it's the burden of the uh, prosecutor to prove the case. It's only the burden of the uh, defense attorney to cast just enough doubt in the jurors' hearts to cause them to say, not guilty. On the other hand, as Christians, we've got to get all that doubt out of our hearts so that we can receive. What did Jesus say there in Mark 11? Have faith in God. That's it. Have faith in God. If you can have faith in God and you pray and ask, it will be yours according to what Jesus said. I'm not preaching something out of my own uh, belief. 
I'm preaching what he just said in his word. Right? Verse 24. Therefore I say, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Right? So why do we trip up over that scripture? Recently, I don't know how far back, but recently I was just going through my day and the Holy Spirit revealed what I'm presenting to you today. He said, what if doubt posed itself as being God's will that a person not be healed? Get this in your spirit. This is what the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. He says, what if doubt posed itself as being God's, that it's God's will that a person not be healed. That would be easy to believe because I've asked and it did not happen. But because it did not happen does not mean it's not God's will. Did you hear what I'm saying? Just because it did not happen does not mean it was not God's will. It means there's something that is standing in the way and the enemy is trying to delay your answer so you will start doubting so you will not get it. See, when the word comes and it gets in your heart, you'll get on that word until you receive it. But if the enemy can come and take that word out of your heart, you will abort your promise. Daniel prayed how long? 21 days. When did God hear him? When? When he opened up his mouth and prayed the prayer of faith, God heard him instantly. How long did it take for that prayer to manifest? 21 days. What happened? Was it not God's will for Daniel to hear the prayer being answered? No. It was the prince of Persia that withstood the messenger of God for 21 days and Daniel had to stand there in faith and say, God, I know you heard my prayer, but there is something that is causing you to delay your coming. God is not slack concerning his promise. Has he not said it? And will he not do it? He said, I will watch over my word to perform it. Get the doubt out. Right? God said, the word that goes forth from my mouth shall not return to me void. He sent his son to heal us. He says that in Exodus 15. I sent my word and healed you of all your diseases. They just sang that today. Is this happening? What if doubt posed itself as being God's will that a person not be healed. Would that person be able to recognize that as doubt? No. They would just believe it because after all, they had not received it. If it's doubt to believe it's not God's will for you to be healed, then it must be God's will for you to be healed. You'll get that on the way to Pizza Hut. If it's doubt to believe, if it's doubt to believe it's not God's will for you to be healed, then it must be God's will for you to be healed. The opposite of what doubt wants you to believe, right? So let me ask you this question. Did Jesus ever reject anyone that needed a healing or miracle from him yes one time no one time Jesus not the people did Jesus ever reject anybody that came to him for a miracle or healing just one time turn with me to uh, Matthew 8 God knows what he's doing today if you get this revelation You'll get what you've been asking for. Is this happening? Come back next week, we'll conclude it. Matthew 8, 14. Now, when uh, Jesus had come into Peter's house, 
he saw his wife's mother, his mother-in-law, lying sick with a fever. So he, Jesus, touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. When evening had come, they brought to him many, say many, many, many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet says, he himself, here it is the third time, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Now, look at it again. When evening had come, they, the people, brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed how many? All who were sick. Now get this. Out of all who were brought to Jesus, who were possessed or sick, not one of them was rejected. All of them were healed and delivered, right? Does that mean that every person around that entire region where Jesus was got healed also? No. Only those who were brought to him received their healing from him. You've got to get to him in order to receive from him. But out of all of those who came to him, got their answer from him. Not one of them was rejected. Right? Turn with me to John chapter 6. John 6, 35. Jesus is speaking to the Jews that are following him out in the wilderness. And he says to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you, but I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Now look at verse 37. This is where we're going. All, how many? All. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. So that tells me everybody that the Father calls to him will come to him, and of those who come to him, how many is he going to reject? None. All of them will be what? Received. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. <clears throat> now, Jesus tells us that all who the Father gives, uh, gives to him shall come to him. And those who come to him, he would not reject them. So how many did Jesus heal out of all those who were brought to him? All. How many will he reject of those who come to him that the Father gives him? None. He's going to receive them all, and he heals them all. So could it be that many believers haven't gotten healed because they have begun to believe a doubting voice that says to them, it's not God's will for you to be healed? That's simple. How many has been struggling with, it's not God's will for me to be healed? Raise your hand, be honest. Come on. See? It's real. That lie is real. It's not God's will for me to be healed. We're told in James to draw nigh to God and heal what? Run? No. He'll draw nigh to us. What happened when they drew nigh to Jesus? He drew to them. What, asked, what happened when blind Bartimaeus, who the crowd said shut up and sat down, what happened when he cried out to him? Jesus got a hold of him and healed him of his blindness. Blind Bartimaeus, you may not have caught that in your reading. Whenever blind Bartimaeus heard Jesus was coming, he couldn't see him, he was blind. I just thought I'd point out the obvious. 
He heard him coming. He, he could tell he's getting closer. He has so much faith in, in what he's heard about Jesus because he couldn't see what Jesus has done, obviously. That he's, he has on the blind coat, that lets, that's the garment that they wore back then that told people that he was blind. He threw the coat off and got up. That's how much faith he had that Jesus was going to receive him. He says, I'm taking off my past. I've taken off the thing that I identified with. I'm going after the one who's going to give me a new identity. And he received what he asked for. Now, look in Matthew 15, 22. Only one place that I know in Scripture where Jesus rejects someone who comes to him. <clears throat> Is this helping you? All right, Matthew 15, 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Now, you will remember, I can't uh, remember which son it was of uh, Noah that sinned against Noah and was cursed. Do you remember which one it is? Huh? Ham. This woman from Canaan is a descendant of Ham. I did the genealogy on this because I did a teaching on a Wednesday night. She was a Canaanite, therefore she was not of the household of Israel. She was a Gentile, plus she was under the curse of her father Ham. Therefore, when she came to Jesus, Jesus could have nothing to do with her because she was outside of covenant. And she's saying, have mercy on me, but she says, O Lord, son of David. That is his messianic name, right? But he answered her, not a word. So he is rejecting her. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out for us. And he answered and said, I was not... Now watch this. It's proven what I just told you, so you know I'm not teaching my opinion if you don't know God's word. That's why you need to study to show your work uh, self-approved. And he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. If she was a Jew then Jesus would have no problem with her. Therefore, she's outside the covenant. She is a Gentile, right? Then she came and worshipped him. Even though he rejected her, she worshipped him. Draw nigh to him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said again, It is not good to take the children's bread. Therefore, she is not a child of, of Abraham, right? It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. You're a dog. And she said, yes, Lord. She agreed. Without faith, you cannot agree with God. But with faith, you will come into agreement with God, right? She came into agreement with Jesus. And she said, yes, Lord, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, watch this, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was what? Her daughter was what? When? That very hour, the only person that I see in New Testament, in the Gospels, that Jesus ever rejected to cause Jesus to turn his heart and give her favor through her faith, and he, she was healed. The daughter was healed. Is it God's will to heal us? Yeah. Yes. How? Have faith in God. That's all it took. Did she have to jump through any religious hoops? Did she have to learn the Torah? Did she have to learn the, the 600-something uh, uh, laws of Moses and the prophets? No. All she had to do was believe. And her daughter was healed at that very hour. That's amazing, isn't it? He granted her favor and healed her daughter all because she believed. Now, turn with me to Matthew 13, 53. I'm going to talk about what Lydia was alluding to a while ago. Matthew 13, 53. 
Now it came to pass, when Jesus had fin finished teaching his parables, that he departed from there. And when he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and all these mighty works? So they're seeing mighty works going on. That's what it says, right? Where did this man get this wisdom and all these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? See, they're, they're dis disdaining him, aren't they? They're, they're showing contempt toward him, even though he's done miracles, mighty works, and they've seen it with their own eyes. Is not his mother Mary and, and his brothers, are they not here and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. See, the spirit of offense is spreading like wildfire in the church in America. And because of that, it won't allow the Spirit of God to move healing and deliverance in the churches. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. Where is he? In his own country and in his own house. Now, he did not do many mighty works there because of what? Unbelief stops the power of God because unbelief dishonors the authority of God. Right? But it says he did not do many. That tells me he did some. Now you're getting it. Even though those in his own hometown refused to honor him as God's son, and even though they had unbelief in their hearts that prevented him from doing many mighty works in their midst, he was still willing and able to heal some who were willing to be healed. That's awesome, isn't it? He wants people saved and healed more than people want him to save and heal them. He did some mighty works in their midst, even though those around him were full of unbelief and dishonor. How badly did he want to heal them? Pretty bad. Is this getting in your spirit? Turn with me to Psalm 103. See, when you put it like that, it's not so hard to believe. <laughs> right? Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not how many. All his benefits. What are all his benefits? Who forgives all your iniquities who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He heals us of all our diseases. The only thing that's keeping us from receiving our miracles and our healing is doubt. That's it. It's God's will for you to be healed. I've given you scripture. I've presented the case. You choose what you want to do with it. There's a video on uh, Facebook about a pastor that had a severe flu, a virus that attacked his vocal cords. He got so bad that eventually he had to give up his pastorate of the church he was pastoring. And he and his wife started going to another church, and he was a part of a Sunday school class at that church. And, and we, we heard the audio recording of his voice. It, it's, it's, it's awful how the enemy had str strangled his vocal cords to where he couldn't hardly speak. And yet in this strained, it's like, a chokehold was around his throat. Pressure. And for three years, he fought with this demon. And so he was ministering at a Sunday school class, and they happened to record it because the class teacher was gone. And so they recorded it. While he's sharing this teaching on healing, 
his voice clears up. And he realizes God just healed him while he's talking about healing. And he starts crying, naturally so, because he's been struggling with this for three years. And his voice becomes pitch perfect clear while he's ministering. And it's on tape. It's God's will for you to be healed. Now stand to your feet. Lydia. Father, I've obeyed your word. I've obeyed your Holy Spirit. Out of all that came to your son, whom you sent to him, of them, all of them were delivered and healed. He even tells us in John 6, all that you gave to him will come to him, and of them that come, he will not cast out. God, I want to give you all the glory and the praise and the honor for this word because it came from you. You're the one who spurred it in my heart to even research it. And it was you who revealed it to me so that your people could hear and through this be set free from the doubt. Is it God's will? If you're here today and you got this word in your spirit and you're ready to receive it's your time. Come. As we get ready to conclude today's program, I want to encourage you to sit down and write us a note, email us. The information will be at the bottom of the screen where you can contact us. Let us know if God has touched you and healed you during the last two weeks of this ministry's uh, teachings on Beyond a Doubt. Have you received a healing or a miracle, perhaps a breakthrough in your life? Would you email us and let us know what God is doing in your life? It would sure encourage us and would help build our faith as we build yours through the preaching of God's Word. It's such a great opportunity to be able to share the Word of God on a weekly basis with you, our viewers, and let God grow us up together in the things of Christ. We're so grateful to have this opportunity. Also, if you have any prayer requests or praise reports, please send those in. You can contact us at prayer at whcnorth.org or you can call our church office and uh, leave a message there if it's after hours. And then finally, if, if you would uh, prayerfully consider becoming a financial contributor to this ministry, all donations are tax deductible and go straight to the television ministry. Will you prayerfully consider becoming a prayer partner or a financial partner? You can correct that, can't you? A, a financial partner and help this ministry do the work of the ministry throughout the nations of the world. God is opening up doors for us, and we want to be able to walk through those and, and touch more lives for his glory. So until this time next week, keep looking up. Christ is coming soon. God bless you. We pray that you've been impacted by today's message. If you need more information or would like to contact us, visit us on our website at whcnorth.org or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968, Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512. 